I've started flying my ZMR250 and my FPV250 faster and faster, which is good. But the problem is it's not so good when you're in a neighborhood. Well, I don't want to give up flying in my neighborhood, so instead I built something slower. This Q200. The Q200 is 200 millimeters instead of 250. And normally you wouldn't think that, you know, 50 millimeters isn't much of a difference. Well, the big difference comes not only in the size of the frame, but also the size of the propellers. Your FPV 250 or your ZMR 250, you're probably running five or six inch propellers. This one runs four inch propellers, so it is noticeably smaller. And if you're flying at line of sight, it's harder to fly it further away because it's just smaller and you can't see it very well. I'll go over some components on this uh, quadcopter. First of all, the frame is the Q200. It's a Q200 frame, and the biggest problem this has, and everybody knows it now, is that this main plate is only one millimeter thick. So what I actually did was I actually got a second plate and put it here together. So I have two one millimeter plates on here uh, together, and it feels lots stronger than it did before. Now, it's the entire plate, so the whole thing is doubled. Now, a, Z a Q200 frame is supposed to look like this. It's supposed to have the main plate on the top with a smaller plate down below with spacers between it. And you can put your FPV gear, your um, ESCs down there in that lower section without um, taking up space on the top section, which you can save for your, uh, speed your flight controller. Well, I didn't want to have that, um, that lower plate down there. I want it to be more of a flat look like this one. And so what I did was I took, this, I took the spare plate and put the two of them together here. And then there's actually a third plate, the third plate that was hanging down below. And you can kind of see here how it kind of end, goes around this uh, peg here. That was the third plate or the second plate that was down below. And so I put it on here as well. And you can kind of see how they overlap a little bit right here. But so the middle of the plate is actually three millimeters thick out here on the arms. These are two millimeters thick now through the motors. I don't have any glue or anything on there, or epoxy holding the plates together. They're all held together by the screws on the motors and the uh, screws through the um, pegs here, the little plastic screws going through the frames. This quadcopter flies with DYS uh, 1306 uh, 3100 kV motors. These motors uh, are rated to run four uh, inch propellers and five inch propellers with no problem. And they can also run 2S to 3S batteries. And some people say they can run 4S. I'm, I haven't tried it yet, but maybe it could. But uh, I've, along with these motors, I've been running these 40, 45 propellers. And these are when I first got them, I just couldn't believe how small they were compared to the six inch propellers I had been using. I didn't think there'd be any way this would fly, but I was wrong. It, it does fly and it's awesome. I'm using RC Timer 20 amp ESCs here. This is what the RC Timer Mini 20 amp ESC label looks like that I've been using. Now, because I don't have that middle plate down here below or the extra space down here below, I had to put these somewhere and I ended up putting them up here on the top, on top of these arms. And they're small enough that they, you know, they fit on the arm just fine. And they're also 20 amps. So even if I draw them real hard, as hard as these motors can, these motors I think only draw like eight amps at the most. And these are rated for 20. So I don't think that these uh, ESCs are gonna burn out. And I just got them uh, stuck on here with electrical tape holding them in place. Because these ESCs don't have a BEC built into them, they're not providing power back into my uh, flight board. Instead, the flight board has to get the power from a separate BEC over here, and this BEC basically takes a 2S, 3S, or 4S battery and lowers the voltage down to 5 volts and feeds that into the uh, flight controller. All the ESCs are connected to the flight controller with a ground wire and a uh, signal wire. Now the flight board I'm using in here is actually a CC3D Mini or a CC3D Atom. I'm not really sure why it has so many names, but it's a small one. It's about half the size of a regular CC3D or a NASA 32. And it flies very well and I haven't even done any tuning and I'm very happy with it already. Uh, also on this board, on this uh, quadcopter, I have a, a, bat a f battery voltage sensor that, that works with the D4R. It's the FBVS. Uh, 01 Free Sky Battery Voltage Sensor 01. And basically, it connects in directly into the battery uh, wiring harness and then it connects into the D4R to send the voltage information back down to your Tyrannus um, if you're flying a Tyrannus. Because there's so little room on this board, I didn't have any way to get in here and create a battery wiring harness that would work well for powering all the ESCs. So what I did was I actually daisy chained them all together. The positive comes in here and connects to this ESC, it goes up, connects to this ESC, goes over to this ESC, and back to this one. The ground wire starts back here in the back, connects to this one, to this one, to this one, to this one. 
some people said, well, you're probably gonna, you know, you're probably gonna get a little uh, low voltage on the on some of your ESCs because you're daisy chaining them instead of having a direct wire feed, and the wire to the positive wire running to this one is longer than every other wire going to the rest of them. That's may be true but I don't even notice it when I'm flying the thing is like rock solid when it flies so you know whatever you you can think that if you want but it's fine it works great as far as the FPV system goes I actually have a, an LT200 up here on top and I wanted I was thinking about getting a 600 watt but the 600 watt would just draw more juice and the less juice I draw the better you know and this isn't going to be flying miles away or anything so 200 should be more than adequate to fly through trees around my house and you know anywhere I've been normally flying because it works fine on my FPV 250 why would it not work on here it's the same thing one of the things I don't like about this frame is I don't really have anywhere good to mount this antenna. These, this little antenna holder came with the mini uh, CC3D and I wasn't sure where to put it. So I just kind of strapped it up here on top and it works okay. The only problem is it's not straight. So it's hard to use the antennas for orientation because, because they're lopsided to the sides. Well, when I get my FPV gear on here, the FPV camera, it won't matter and I won't even see it. Like I said earlier, I bought this primarily to fly slower. And I've been using these 1300 uh, milliamp hour batteries, they're 2S, and they do a pretty good job keeping this quadcopter up in the air and they do a good job flying it. And it, it has a fine uh, speed, it has enough power to maneuver around trees and things like that. It doesn't have a lot of power, but it has enough power. And then I'm also trying to keep in mind that I'm not building this for speed, I'm building it for slowing down. Well, I got a 3S uh, Rhino battery, and oh, when you fly the two cell battery, it flies real well. You really appreciate how solid it is, and you would really enjoy flying it. You put the three cell on it, and the thing feels like it just comes to life. It has a lot more power, it has a lot higher top end speed, but I gotta remember to use the 2S because I built it for slowing down, not for speeding up. This is the 2S 1300 milliamp hour battery I've been flying with, and it fly weighs in about 62.7 grams and this is the Rhino 3S battery I've been flying with and it weighs in about 93.7 grams. Now the quadcopter itself it weighs in at 194.9 grams so 194 plus the weight of the batteries will give you, give you your uh, all-up weight. Here's the two cell battery and we'll try to get a little bit of speed runs with it. Those motors just don't wind up like the three cells do. One thing bad about flying with the three cell battery is that it does hang down below the pegs. So if you wanted to land on the pegs, you'd have to get a little bit longer ones or, you know, just land in the grass, it'll be fine too. One other thing I have a hard time remembering is that I'm using a D4R transmitter. I'm using my Tyrannus, just like I do on my ZMR250 and my FPV250. This can go a long ways. It can go just as far as the other stuff can because it's using the same equipment. It's just the motors are smaller and the ESCs are smaller. So the range on this is just like any other quadcopter I've been flying. So this has been a, just a short review of my Q200. The more I fly this, the more I enjoy it. And I didn't really know if I would enjoy the smaller propellers and the slower speed, but I do. And now I'm kind of thinking I'd like to get my 150 frame finished up and get it built and flying. I have the same set of motors and uh, I have to cut down some propellers for it because it can't use four inch, it has to use three inch. Anyway, this is my Q200. You got any questions about it, let me know in the comments and I'll answer them as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.